So I'm here today with Alex, the CEO of Canada, to talk about what you as a founder are responsible for when onboarding new hires. So first and foremost, prior to onboarding or before day one, there are three things you've got to get right. You've got to do your IT tools and admin, get that sorted. We don't want logins and laptops on day one. Let's get that sorted before that. Secondly, we need to get technical reading out to that new hire. So about the market, about the way in which has your product or your industry has developed. And then thirdly, let's really update them in terms of the market and the persona understanding. So they're not coming in to day one thinking, who are we selling to? What's the market? What's the value we create? We want to share those materials up front before they join on day one. So James, so do you have a system where you have a new hire? How do you check in with them in the first week, the first month, the first six months? How does that work? Yeah, so I think a high level, you've got three phases. You've got your um, pre-onboarding, you've got your onboarding, your ramping. And then within those phases, typically the uh, the um, pre-onboarding is one month before. You've got your onboarding, which is typically one to three, and your ramp is typically four to six. So you would have check-ins within that time, normally staggered and um, the, the intervals increasing as you go through time. So it'll be quite um, high intensity to start with and then spacing out uh, as you go forward. But yeah, you, you've definitely got to have um, clear expectations on the outcomes at those intervals or those milestones we refer to them as. Uh, they've got to be in the calendar as well, not just I'll check in with you next week sometime. It's our, I'll see you at Thursday at 12 o'clock. That's what I mean by a milestone time. And then you've got to refer back to the scorecard that you've created for the role as well. So when you've gone out to hire the role, you're clear on the outcomes and then you're measuring that person against the outcomes. And that's a transparent and collaborative process that you have with that new hire. And then one thing I'd just be really careful and cautious of is when you are hiring new people, just be careful that you're not plugging problems with people. It's one of the easiest, uh, it's the path of least resistance for most founders. I've got a problem, let's hire someone that will solve my problem. And sometimes that's not really addressing the root cause of the problem. So Alex, we hear a lot about founders wanting to move from a founder-led sales to a team-led sales environment. But sometimes we notice this almost abdication of sales responsibility. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think straight after you make a sales hire, I think sometimes we expect success quite quickly um, and we don't leave them enough room to ramp, to train and to make mistakes. So I think the reality is, is that as a founder, you need to actually factor in time. You need to factor in that you're still going to have to support that salesperson. And I think sometimes, you know, um, as soon as we have that salesperson, I think we sometimes think, okay, superb, I can spend more time on product on, a, on a other parts of the business. So I think you have to remember that, you know, three to six months, they will still need your support. They will still need your encouragement. In fact, they will always need your encouragement. But, you know, do remember that it takes them, they will, get, it takes them a little longer than you would hope for them to get up to speed. At some point they will get up to speed, but you still have to support them. Yeah, I completely agree. I think the empowerment and the transfer of knowledge is one of the massive causes of friction with new hires and the success of new hires into the commercial operation for tech companies. It's a very hard thing to do to teach other people what you've been creating over the last two or three years when you've made those early sales, you've built the product yourself or, or with your first developer um, you know, team as well. I think the second thing is that with this thing we're witnessing sometimes of an abdication of sales responsibilities is it is quite true that sometimes the founder wants to get rid of sales either because of their experience, their skill level in the area, or even 
their bandwidth as well to perform you know great sales process for um, their company so i think sometimes it, it can be a multitude of factors but one thing i would you know urge you guys here listening to this is to not use this phrase of no one can sell it better than i can now, that is not a scalable and predictable revenue model for your company you just need to be really careful that you you put your ego aside and you realize that if you want to build a scalable company you're going to need to empower others to sell for you and with you as the ceo of the company yeah but james that's really tough you know i mean i, I you know as a as a founder i think you I think we forget that it's so hard to pass that on to other people and you're absolutely right that is the only way but I think you know it is a really hard thing to do yeah I completely agree with you it's not easy but also you know growing a company to an exit is not easy so there are going to be some tough calls some tough decisions and it does come down to getting the right talent on board for your company to get to the next level and it's about trust isn't it you know you've got to trust and i think within that you've got to set them up for success which is training which is tools which is all of those things you spoke about but i think at its core it's trust you have to trust them that that even if it's not exactly as you would do it 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 will work <laughs>